Hi, I'm Dr. Manoli Manolikakis from Advanced Facial Surgery, and you're listening to PBR Podcast. Hit it! What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Polano, Derek D, and sitting in our first doctor. The first doctor we've had on the show, right? The doctor. Very first one, yeah. The doctor. We're just going to call him the doctor. doctor. (laughs) Dr. Manoli Manalakakis, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, gentlemen. No problem at all, man. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Derek. You too. This is an impressive resume. Let me just, uh, sorry, so undergraduate at BU. Yes. Oh, you're going to jump right in. I just just want to jump right in. Just just give a quick. I like it. Yeah, and so you went to a, then you went to Rutgers. Yes, and you uh, went so to you, dental school first. So you could, you're a dentist. Uh, well, I, I dentist by trade. Yes, I went to dental school for four years, and that's where. Then after dental school, that's where I left dentistry behind. And, and I went to oral, and I went to I went to oral and maxillofacial surgery, which is a really complex type of specialty of dentistry. That but, sounds. But but basically, it's anything from the clavicles up, reconstruction, aesthetic, uh, cancer surgery. Wow. Dent- dental implants, extraction of wisdom. So you name it, it, it covers it pretty much from the neck up. It, this is, it's and then Columbus, crazy. Mississippi for a fellowship, for my fellowship in, facial. in facial cosmetic surgery. Jeez, yeah. you got like 40 years of school. Right, if you're, look, if you're looking <laughs> at, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you, you can see like normally we have comedians and actors on where our, our notes are really like, uh, uh, make people laugh, tell fart jokes, yeah, right? Yeah. And look at this from uh, Dr. Manol. So this, we're so excited to have our first doctor on. And it's going to be a little bit of a game changer from our last episode with uh, Re- the Reverend Bob Levy and Twitchells, <laughs> yeah. but you never know where it goes, and it's uh, that's I'm, what it's all I'm, about. I'm man. honored to be here, and um, I'm actually humbled actually being asked, so thank well, you guys. Thanks for coming. Oh, thanks man. for coming. Right, right at the top of the episode, tell tell anybody who's listening, uh, you know, sometimes when you're listening to an interview and you don't know somebody and you want to know them and you want to see what they look like, where can they stalk you on social media? Social media, you can find me at Dr. Manoli, that's on uh, um, Twitter. Then you can also catch me on Advanced Facial Surgery on Facebook. And on Instagram, it's Dr. Manolakakis. His Did name's awesome, by the way. Manolakakis. Manoli Manolakakis. Manoli Manolakakis. I said that right? Say that when you're five years old yeah. trying to get through grade school. <laughs> you, <laughs> you said it right, which is impressive. Dr. Yeah. Manoli Manolakakis. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Manoli, man on the caucus. <laughs> Yo, Dr. Manoli, hand me that cannoli. You like, like Stromboli? You're just going to rhyme his name into things? Is that what we do here? That just sounds fun. It's oh. all good, <laughs> so, so uh, doctor. Yes. Can I call you doctor? You call me you <laughs> do you, want, you want me to call you doctor now? No, you don't have to call me doctor. That's crazy, man. Is it? Yeah, man. What's up, doc? <laughs> yeah, exactly. See how he, he winked at the camera. <laughs> That's good. He's like, he definitely wants to call a doctor. So... What uh let, let's get right into it real quick. Um you you uh basically do plastic surgery. Yes. Um well I, I don't call it plastic surgery because that's a specialty. I actually call it cosmetic surgery. Co- okay. So that's more uh appropriate to because I'm not a plastic surgeon. I'm actually an oral and maxillofacial surgeon who does cosmetic surgery. And there mm-hmm. are plastic surgeries, plastic surgeons who do cosmetic surgeries as well. But you know, we there's reconstructive surgery, there's cosmetic so it, and the only reason I kind of point that out is because it is a kind of a, a, a sticking point with certain uh, other specialties. You know, okay. there's rivals all over. Sure, the I bet. Oh, I'm bet. sure everything. I mean, Turf wait, and, you, and you, you, you said you live in the city, New York City. Yeah. And uh, but your, all your practices are not that far from here. <clears throat> Monmouth Medical. Uh, yeah. So I you, practice you, out of Monmouth, out of Jersey Shore, which is the trauma center. So I do a lot sure. of trauma out of Jersey Shore, and uh, I do a lot of cleft lip and palate stuff out of Monmouth. And and my practice is in Shrewsbury, so I you're always I, coming down. I'm always, I come down for well four days a week. Yeah. You have the reverse commute. I got a reverse commute, which is kind of cool. I actually. take the yeah, train from uh, across the street from Amoth. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, from yeah, Branch. That's cool. <laughs> to go into the city. So let's let's go back to to your childhood, right? You grow up in a suburb of I I, I guess you could call it the suburb of New York City, right? Like uh, I guess we're all the suburbs. We're all in New York suburbs. City. Um, you know, you go to you come out of high school. At what point do you start to think? hmm, you know, I want to cut people's faces <laughs> open. You know, like where? How does? Can you take us down that road, man? Because you go to school and did you know what you wanted to do? Um, no, I. Ha- I mean, I kind of. I knew I wanted to. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to be in some sort of healthcare. But did I know exactly that I wanted to get into the aesthetic game? No, that that was a process. Um, my first memory of wanting to try to help someone was 
uh, Dow Avenue School, grade school. <laughs> Dow Ave. And, I'm, yeah. and I don't know if Chico Breckenridge is hearing this at all, but I don't, do you remember Chico Breckenridge? I don't, Chico I don't. Breckenridge was my grade. So Chico Breckenridge and I were playing soccer and <laughs> Chico on the blacktop behind Dow. And he takes a nosedive and he's got snots and boogers and, and, and blood coming out of his face. And the first thing I, my instinct was to run to him. And meanwhile, everyone's running yeah. away. So then I didn't know, but in the back of my mind, thinking back, that's probably my first instinct. Um, you know, my grandfather was a doctor. My dad's a pharmacist. So from that, from that standpoint, I was always interested in the health career. Um, Finished high school. I knew I wasn't playing football in high, in college, right. so uh, I kind of had to make a decision, um, and I went pre med. Um, first two years of school were probably you know less than average, uh, just kind of time management, trying to figure things out. No mm-hmm. real direction as to yeah, I think I want to be a doctor, but I don't know what I want to do. Um, and then I started um, working with a guy in town locally in the summer, and uh, you know he took me to the hospital. And I saw like a uh, corrective jaw surgery Oof. and I was like, you know what? This is something I can do for the rest of my life. Wow. So I went from that. I said, what do I have to do? He said, got to go to dental school. I said, okay, fine. I'll go to dental school. I didn't want to go to dental school, but I'll go. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't really. An end, right? Yeah, yeah. It was ba- basically that's the way I looked at it. And then after that, uh, you know, I, I matched in a residency where, you know, I was at a level one trauma center in Long Island. Uh, we took care of gunshot wounds, car accidents, you name it, we did it. And um, it, at my time there, you know, we would put all these car accident victims and, and really traumatic injuries back together. And then I didn't, you know, didn't possess that one slight little thing, which was if I want to take a little bit of eyelid skin off of someone, why can't I do that? I just put a gunshot wound together and they look like a human being. Why can't I just measure some skin? And so that's what made me go down to Mississippi and really focus my my practice on aesthetic facial surgery, which is a, a passion. I love it. So, so it's, like, it's all it's an art essentially. Oh it's, yeah, you know, right? it's definitely an art. Yeah. But, but, yeah. <laughs> but what's amazing is that like, I don't know about you, Mike, but I can't like I can't even put on TLC and watch someone operate oh, on somebody. Hell no. like, That's, I wanted to ask you when you go into uh, with that doctor the first time to look at that jaw surgery. Yeah. In your mind, something clicked, and you were like, "Damn, that's awesome!" And I can do that. And Derek and I, we, we like, we want to run right. and vomit on the floor. I right. Can, so I, I, I want to help people, but if it's uh, man, how how what is that <laughs> moment like to you? You know, can oh, you it's recall? A, it's, it's an epiphany. I mean, you look. I mean, I I was at River. I used to be on staff at Riverview, but I just recently got off. I just wasn't active enough. But going into Riverview, I would whether my case was in that operating room or not, I would go down to that room, room one, mm-hmm. and I would check it out, and I would try to just like remember the way that everything was. It, it was like it was such an impact on me that I went from a average student in college, in college to three point five for for the last two right. years. It so became your passion. It became something you were totally yeah. changed. It's, yeah, no longer work. It was a, there was there was a reason for me to be there, and it, you know, it, I was just, you know I'm I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Just had to work a little harder. That's all. When when you go into these uh, and don't undercut yourself, man. But when you go when you go into these rooms, yeah. uh, thin mints, junior mints, which one works better? <laughs> for what? <laughs> anyone? Anyone? Nobody watches Seinfeld. Remember when uh, Kramer dropped the uh, junior mint into the uh, guy's uh, gullet uh, <laughs> and he like, cured cancer? <laughs> It's one of the best episodes oh, of Seinfeld. I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm not. Yeah. I'm off my yeah. game there, man. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, so, me too. Uh, yeah, lost damn. Me. The funny thing is, earlier when uh, when we were just talking uh, to the people on Patreon with Manol, Doctor Manoli, uh, he you call uh, me Manoli, I was man. like, I like that. That's cool. What hand do you cut with? And he was like, uh, <laughs> he's like, he's like, he holds out his hand. He goes, I've been, you know, I'm, I'm working on facial surgery. I was like, damn, it's so steady. He's like, yeah, but <laughs> I, I cut with this hand. <laughs> I totally butchered that. And I stole it from Gene Wilder. But. That's cool. Are you righty or lefty? I'm ambidextrous. Oh really? So uh, Do you actually write with your both hands? No. So I can operate with both hands. Um I write with my left. I do all sports righty. Wow, that's um, interesting. Um and then like, I'll pick up a blade with my my left, but suturing and all that, that's all back and forth and it's kind of interesting. It wow. messes me up, it messes everyone up. Everyone doesn't know how to like hand me instruments, but <laughs> it's all good. So uh everybody everybody listening wants to know like you're you're in the emer- you did time in the emergency room yeah, you still do give still us do, man. give oh, us man, the, he's seen some crazy he's seen some story, shit man. he's seen some shit yeah, can you share that man. kind of stuff i mean, I mean it's probably yeah, very upsetting I, I, I can share i can share stories with you just because no one's no one's um kind of uh privacy's um you know um 
we don't we don't we don't talk about names and stuff but uh i guess one of the worst things i've had recently is a gunshot self-inflicted gunshot wound mm -hmm. um those are it was devastating um good kid um lived know, yeah yeah unfortunately when you when you try to do that um you you they end up missing you know and they end up just basically destroying their face and you know it goes from you know someone who wanted to end it all now you now you just deal with forget about the reconstructive part and the, you know nine hours to put everything back together and you know the 20 surgeries in the future for you to just get your jaw back into to one piece um so from that you know those things you know there's trauma and then there's that yeah <laughs> and, and that will always kind of stick How old you was the kid? young 30 you know 30 years old uh, that will always stick you, and that will always hurt you. And you know, you, I carry that around. I mean, I've had three or four gunshot room, gunshot wounds, self inflicted, in my lifetime who I've treated, um, and I know every one of their names. I know everything about them. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. It's a it's a really tough thing to go through. Do you ever As revisit? Do you ever revisit them um, down the line? I guess you yeah. do multiple surgeries. Yeah, I mean, they're, they they you know the thing is, the crazy thing, no pun intended. The crazy thing is is that they actually end up being some of your best, my best patients uh, because they're in and out of the office all the time. Mm -hmm. They're having a, tr a small procedure here, a small procedure there. They staff knows them, you know, and they're, they just had a bad, they had a bad moment and it's, you, you can't take it back. Um, you just hope that you can be a part of that rebuilding and not only the reconstructive part of the physical, but you try to be part of that, that, you know, psychological. I mean, to me, I look at it as if I'm going to rebuild you, I'm going to not only rebuild you from physical, but I want to kind of help you through that next process. It's tough, though. You know, yeah, it's, really got, it's, it's, it's draining got, on us too. I can I can imagine, and, and not to like bring down <laughs> bring down the show. No, more. I'm not trying. Like, to have you in. have you have you had to do that talk where you go out into the room and be like, I'm I'm sorry, we, we couldn't. Um, like. I haven't had to do that with. Oh, I've had to I do. I've had to have the talk. I've had to have to the talk going wife, into husband. surgery. Like this is really serious. Um, there was a there was a case that I was involved. I got pulled into. There was a, a guy who had a necrotizing fasciitis, which is a really bad. It's a skin fl flesh eating disease. You ever hear that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it started from like a tooth infection, and you think that these things are just like not that big of a deal, but uh, it basically ended up, you know, taking all the way down. You guys can see on down to his chest, from his fr face, fr from here down, the entire skin had to be removed because it was becoming gangrenous and, and just basically toxic. But you can't survive that. I mean, those are things that you just, you know, it gets out of hand. And, you know, so they had to have a conversation with a family member. Those are, it's tough, man. How does something, in this day and age, how does something it get happens. to that level, man? It happens. It I'm, happens. There's neglect. There's, there's, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. Or I'm just, you know, I have a toothache. Um, it, they don't, pe people don't go to the dentist. You know, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Um, uh, you know, whether it's Jersey Shore or mom, I, I, every time I'm on a call, at least one time I have someone who's got a neck infection that, you know, these these infections can go from a tooth, they can go to your brain, they can go to your yeah. lungs. I mean, people die from these. And, you know, it's it's crazy, but that's <laughs> scary. that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so from so I can go from a facelift in the morning and then be on call at the hospital, and next thing I know I'm in, like, knee-deep into pus. Oh, oh. come on. Oh. That's what this show's about. No, it is. It is about, it's all about pus. Right, it's all about pus. That's what the P stands yeah, for. Yeah, it's a P for pus. <laughs> That's a terrible word. Uh, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's pus, gross. pus Botox yeah. and, and yeah. revolution. So we do, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The pus Botox <laughs> revolution. <laughs> oh, man, that's brutal. I, I can't, I'm trying to like run my mind through your day, man. I, you know, like we were, we were, um, we were bullshitting a little bit before. Yeah. I was, a lot of people, a lot of guests that come on refer to our, our camera light microphone unit as like if Star Trek had taken a shit on a truck. <laughs> right? Like that's where my close, mind man. goes, you know? <laughs> yeah, right? But that's where my mind goes. Like I could never pick up a scalp. I could build this. I could operate this. But I could never fix somebody's face after a car accident or a gunshot. Like had and, well, a lot and of you, school goes into No, that. no, I get it. But you know, I that's where my schooling was in as well. True, right. true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So but like uh you talk about like reconstructive surgery. So you get in an accident and and your jaw is shattered. Now, how do you go about putting something back together, knowing that this is just step one, right. and then I have to let this heal, right. and then step two happens? Like, what goes I, into that? I, uh, a whole lot of planning, and um, 
Yeah, it's just years and years of kind of knowing what works and what doesn't work and, and just trying to, like, stabilize and, you know, you, you cut out what's no good and you build on what is good. And, um, you know, it's just it's just like sports, you know. It's the same thing. Building blocks. Building blocks, man. That's it. And sometimes you, you after step one, and it, it doesn't work, and you got you to just kind of reassess? Back to, you got to go back to the drawing board. You half gotta, time? You got half time, man. <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's exactly, that, exactly. Yeah, that, that's inside joke there. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's that's crazy. But yeah, I guess you know it's it's a lot of practice and a lot of school, a lot, I mean, of, practice, a lot of years of school and. Right. I mean, but yeah, I can never. I would never be able to cut into. I just you can't do it. But that's why there's people like you that do what you do, right? And you help people like us that. Well, we so here's do. here's an interesting <laughs> tidbit. I go, you know, I walk into my brother-in-law, Doctor P, Doctor Paradak. It's a little plug for him. Uh, he's a spine surgeon. He's in Shrewsbury too. But I, I'll go into his operating room when he's right next door to me, and he does spine surgery. So I'm sitting there putting faces back together. I walk into his room and. You look and you see like the entire back filleted open, oh. and you're looking right down onto the spine, that's and you're crazy. like, "Okay, <laughs> makes me feel pretty weak." <laughs> and that's a whole. But I just put someone's face back together, and he'll walk into my room and be like, "Wow, yeah. look at that!" Wow. So it's just mm-hmm. a, it's just an interesting thing when you look at someone else's specialty or someone else's sure. training, and you know, I'm sure it happens in every field. Absolutely, yeah. You know? No, that's true. Uh, let me ask you this question. What do you think about doing what you do? How do you feel about stem cell research and kind of, uh, you know, regrowing body parts and and harvesting? I've never had anybody on the show to ask this (laughs) question. I'm kind of excited about it, but (laughs) you must have thought about it. I I, I love it. I think think it's absolutely 100% necessary. Um, There needs to be, obviously, guidelines and there needs to be, you know, rules and regulations on it or else people are going to be doing some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But... um, you know, I use I use these types of materials, even though they're not technically stem cells. They're what we call progenitor cells, meaning they 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 can turn into wherever you put it into. So if I have, you know, if I want to turn bone into more bone, I have a type of uh, it's like amniotic fluid. So um, there, I, I hundred I'm wholeheartedly for it. I think it's the future. I think you know, um, I think transplant surgery is great. I but at the same time, if I can grow a heart off of some tissue cells that I I gave from a swab inside my mouth, um, I'm all about that. All right, I see. Not, that to me is med- that's the future of medicine. I feel like that's well, that's it's bound to happen. But well, why is it? It's not allowed to happen. Well, that's it's not, the not thing. that it's not allowed to happen. There's just no funding for it. So, How is there not funding well, for that? Well, like, there's private funding for it, right? There's private. There's no government funding government for funding. It. All right, and really, the government, if they were smart, they would they back. I mean. It, it needs to happen. And, and you I, take politics out of it, really, but you just need to, you know. And I feel like, um, you know, like we, at where we are right now, I feel like we should be able to, at least some people who are paralyzed, fix. Oh, for sure. Like, man. I think we could, I think we could, but our technology now, I feel like how we ha- haven't done that yet. Well, I think the problem is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the more, there's no funding for it because of lobbyists right. and such, right? Yeah, so if, if, if political if, aspect. Sure. Yeah. Like, we want, they want people to have cancer and, and heart disease and because it, 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 you know, it goes down to drugs, right? If no one needs those drugs because you could just grow another lung, you know, where's the money coming from? Right? I mean, am I way uh, off? No. You're not way off. Uh, I wouldn't say you're way off. I think that I mean, just not to cut you off, but I also think robots are going to take over the planet. But that's well, maybe, <laughs> so maybe I'm they, a little they bit might. off. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, I think the computer without a com- if you take your everyone's computer away right now, everyone will realize how stupid we are. Oh yes, like, take your iPhone away. Yeah, like the you amazing know, thing. Sh- this thing. lose your <laughs> iPhone for five minutes. See what kind of like anxiety uh, attack you have. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I do. What do you you'd probably do everything on your? You're recording me on your iPhone. Yeah. So everything. We, if we lose your iPhone, this place shuts down. <laughs> Everything shuts down. It Everything's could, gone. It could. <laughs> wow. It's I mean, I, you know, I argued that the end of the world will happen because of technology, and I don't know if it's definitely, uh, you know, I don't know if it's the Terminator effect, which we talked about on the last episode, where robots are going to take over the world. But I believe that uh, the technology will end the world probably sooner or later, maybe in our lifetime, because of misuse by humans. You know oh, what I mean? For sure. I mean, we're headed that way. So. I mean, I mean, hacks become hacks become more prevalent every day. I get some kind of crazy email, or somebody hacks a phone or a computer. Right. The youth are, that are the youth that came up. Well, we got these cell phones, uh, you know. Manuel, when you and I, you graduated high school ninety two. I graduated right. ninety three. Derek, you're not far behind, but we got cell phones maybe in college. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, right? There was no cell phones in high school. 
No, no, we had beep, beep, beepers. Yeah, yeah, beepers. Yeah. And I, I don't know who I don't, I don't know who we were beeping or paging, but it was each yeah. other. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. mean, like, and then you had to go to a right. payphone. You had to go to payphone yeah. to, to beep the guy right next to you. It so was no, I remember those. I never had one, but I was. All right, right. thanks, dude. Take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I got a cell phone dude. sophomore year. Of, Appreciate that. Of high school, that, sophomore year. So the point, the point being though, the kids that are coming up, the kids that are in high school now that were raised, they know no different than the iPad. If you show them a picture, they as a as a baby, they go like this on it. They try to swipe across. Cross, That's right? insane. Those kids are so much more in tune uh, with the technology and able to do things with the technology to manipulate the technology, and right. that's where the problem is going to come in. And not because they're evil or whatever, right. and I'm not blaming the children, but they're just, it's going to be too fast yeah. and too strong, and eventually yeah. they're going to launch a bomb or a drone or, do you see what that's, you know what I mean? That's, I don't even think like that, but you're right, because they can manipulate a lot of different things. Yeah. They're smart. Sure, they are smart. We'll now, see what happens now in your field. Like <laughs> how much, crazy. how much cutting do you see? Whether it's when your brother in law is doing mm -hmm. spinal surgery or mm -hmm. when you're doing facial, how much is uh, operated by your hand? You know, I made the joke about a shaky hand. Right. And how much is actually via robotic, robotic? and stuff? Um, in my specialty, there is start. There's there's like an encroachment now of some some robotic stuff, um, but ninety nine percent of it is being done by my hand, at least for what I do. Yeah. Um the um there is the, the, the computer aspect and the kind of like the sci fi effect of it is um or it goes in our planning. Um so everyone will go ahead, like if I'm doing a jaw reconstruction or I'm doing jaw surgery, I'll actually go and ahead and get a CAT scan of the patient's facial skeleton and then um I set it up on a computer system where um, we we actually perform the surgery before you do before it. I do the surgery. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, it's all computer animated practice. surgery. It's, well, it's not even practice. It's just saying, okay, I want my I want the jaw to move five millimeters this way. I want to fix the the crookedness of the mandible or the maxilla, whatever it is that you want to do. Or I need to I need to make cuts here. So and then what we do is we we trans we we transpose that information that we've done on the computer. Which is down to the millimeter, mm -hmm. okay, actually a hundredth of a millimeter, um, and then we take that with guides, surgical guides, and we we, we relate that into the into the into the facial surgery. So, so when you're actually really cool. going that's, in, you have a blueprint when you're going in. That's awesome. Oh yeah, it's like architect. Yeah, you have, yeah. You, have, you, have the, you have your blueprints. That's what. Yeah, you just right. Said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I ever brought this up on the show, but I've had facial surgery. Okay. I had a large birthmark on the right side of my nose. Oh, very cool. And I had it uh, like my entire right side, and they, the skin on my side right here is now on my face. It went down all seven layers. And it was plastic surgery, but there's no plastic involved. Well, yeah. But, um, is there ever? Uh, no. The pl plastic surgery doesn't... It, it just means to, like, manipulate. It doesn't... It's not It's yeah. not really meaning plastic as, as far as, like, the material plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, so uh, I, I looked a lot different up until I was, like... A, I, got, I had my surgery summer after freshman year of high school. And, uh, because that was... They wanted... Because I was essentially was about as tall as I was going to grow and... That's where my skin was. So it was a birthmark, or was it like a meangioma or something like that? It was a birthmark. It wasn't cancerous. They tested it. Okay. Uh, uh, um, was it dark or was it black? Or was it dark? Red? Oh, it was okay. Dark, real dark. So and what they do? They cut it out and then they put a skin graft in there. Yeah, and I, and when you're when you're when you're when you're that age, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna wake up and my nose is gonna look like my skin right here. Right. Like, so I, I wake up and I had the band. My, I had a whole bandage sewn into the right side of my face, and uh, like. And I, 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 it was the next day they took that one off, and then the next day they took the bandage off that was actually sewn into my right. face. And the doctor sees it and he's like, "This looks great." And I'm looking, and I saw it, and I, it was like the nastiest purple and gross. And I'm like, "He's like, this looks great." But meanwhile, he was actually lying. He was just saying that to me. He thought it wasn't going to take, and if it wasn't going to take, they would have to do a, a d different approach or something. But it did take. But uh, my my dermatologist was in Empire State Building, Doctor Kopf. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard, and then, then the guy who's, who who operated on me was Doctor Thorne. I forget his first name. These are in Manhattan. Yeah, in the okay. city, and uh, I I haven't seen them since I was. Well, your nose there. looks pretty good, dude. I can't. really... No, they did a great yeah, job. Very nice. Yeah, they did a really good job. It was a long time ago. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I uh, it was. Yeah, so you know what it's like to have a, a procedure on your face, and you yeah, know, yeah, it was intense. Yeah, it's and pretty then intense. Every, every day for like how many years I had to put this special stuff on it because they didn't want it to scar and get like a keloid around my nose. Yeah. That's like a, when you see like the black dudes with like the branding on yeah. there. That's like a that's a called a keloid, right? It's a keloid, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And um, 
So yeah, that was and, and my scar is like this big on my side because mm-hmm. that you can't cut a circle and sew it up, so they cut like an ellipse or whatever. Right. And and I remember that hurt more than this never hurt. They cut wide open into my face, right. every let down every right. layer of skin, but the side surgery is what hurt the yeah, most. Yeah, typically the body surgery hurts more than the facial surgery. Yeah. Yeah, the face doesn't hurt as much. It no. swells, it'll swell up on you, but it won't it shouldn't hurt. It wouldn't, yeah. it shouldn't hurt too bad. That was you Did uh, I ever tell you that? Yeah. yeah. I knew you. Oh, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was your butt though. I thought you had ass face. <laughs> well, all my friends would joke with me. They were I was like, waiting for the ass face <laughs> joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all my friends joke with me. They were like, "Oh, you're going to fart out your nose." <laughs> and uh but no, he got it from my side. I was going to go a different route cuz you described it. Should as, I, you want to see guys want to see the scar? Yeah, show it to everybody. Oh, damn, dude. Dude, what's that? up? Right you got to come see me and get that laser, bro. <laughs> You nah. can fix that. The, no, the nose looks good, but the scar that they took it from, yeah, it looks thick. How would you? Chick, fi- well, how it would was you fix the, that? it was just a line laser. for a long. Laser it right yeah, off. Just laser that. <laughs> Chicks dig scars, man. They like, I know, <laughs> I know. I try to scar myself up. Didn't work too great. I fell off a boat. <laughs> I got a scar over here. Where I fell off a boat, and that was a real shitty sew up job. That's shitty. It's like this big, <laughs> and I got my appendix scar. You're I've, all, you're I've told girls up, before, man. like, like, oh, I got, bit, fight. I got bit by a shark, and you like went this way. I'm like, really? Is that what happened? <laughs> I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Did you ever do like, uh, like plastic surgery on any of Donald Trump's, uh, you know, family? Because <laughs> no. he's here, he'd like to talk to you about it. Because he said he said you did. Donald, you, Dr. Manoli, sitting right here. Manoli, cannoli. <laughs> He's an idiot. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember Donald? I love Donald. Hey, Donald. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I saw you that one time. We we're gonna take care of this. You didn't do it. <laughs> Vote for me, Trump, 2016. Hey, Donald. I found a great picture online that you were sporting my hairstyle. You had a little man bun going. <laughs> had a man bun. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. It's the best yeah. bun. It is fantastic. It's a golden bun. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, everyone in the world besides me, idiots. It's crazy. Uh, Sometimes he I like, can't even believe he showed up. He stops tonight. in from I time mean, to time. How did that happen? It's amazing. He actually has a real. I, you know, I hate to beat a dead horse, but is it, Donald has a really good plan about the wall. You know, between like the United wall. States and Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Donald, what, what are you going to put on the wall again? Just in case they didn't listen to last episode, you were going to put something on the wall after 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 the Mexicans build the wall and Arnold Schwarzenegger throws them over the wall. You were going to put something on it. I forgot what I said, <laughs> but it's going to be something like, beat it, nerds. <laughs> uh, I thought it was just going to be Trump on the wall. <laughs> oh, Trump. It's going to be the most fantastic uh. glass gold wall you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, every time uh, every, every time that the Don comes by, Schwarzenegger's not far behind. Um, so uh, dude, would you like to talk to him? Absolutely. It'd be my honor. What would you, if you had to ask Arnold Schwarzenegger, the you know, governor of California, ex-governor of right. California, uh, what would you ask him? Dude, what the hell were you thinking? Having sex with your uh, housekeeper. Dollar the dollar for the time I've asked that question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, she was home. She has a large breast, and I just couldn't help myself. And uh, I'm a, I'm what they call a uh, I'm a sexaholic. <laughs> <laughs> she's gross. <laughs> Don, do you think she's gross? Don, you've met her, right? Disgusting. <laughs> I don't know. Every now and then it happens. How much sauce do you do, Arnold? <laughs> I did a lot. No, <laughs> <laughs> I've done so much sauce, Go, uh, marinara sauce, gravy sauce, all. <laughs> uh, oh, Donald. steroids, yeah, plenty. Uh, a little Donald Trump, a little Arnold Schwarzenegger. We've been going to those two a lot lately. I know, I like it. I, you know, you got to get. Oh, you, you know what? Down, dude. He does. He does. <laughs> um, we got to get some new ones. <laughs> I think it's time for some well, new ones. J- I mean, Breaking Bad's not even on anymore. You ever watch Breaking Bad? Oh, I gotta catch up on that, man. Yeah, yo, yeah. you gotta catch up on that, Doc. Like, yeah. I could say you met some of your patients. And like, yo, me and Mr. White will say you like, yo, just give me a call. You got mad money. You're a doctor, right? <laughs> yo, Mike's a bitch. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> he always calls me a bitch. I don't understand why he does it. But Manoli, this uh, this music, this sexy music you hear is a, uh, indicates a game we like to play. It's called Top or Bottom. Oh, All right, uh, it's a game we play on every episode. I'm going to give you two terms. If these two things were, were in a relationship, which one would be on the top? Which one would be the, on the bottom? It's tailored to you. We're going to round table it, starting with you. You ready to play the game? Let's go, baby. Top or bottom, number one, intellect or athleticism? Wow. That's a good one, right? Make me think, man. Oh. It's like NFL or a doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Peyton Manning's pretty smart. Wow. I'm going to sound really shallow here, but athleticism is top. Yeah? Why, why is that? Why is that? It's just such a... It's, it's such... 
a big part of my life. Without it, I wouldn't have been able to do the intellect the intellectual part. So that's mm. why. It gives you the. Uh... It gave me the drive. It gave me the desire. It gave me the determination. It gave me the work ethic. So without it, I wouldn't be here. And you're you're doing some to this day. You're doing some crazy uh, oh, yeah, athleticism. Man. Yeah, it's high. I try. We're I'm 41, man. I see you working out with masks yeah, on, yeah, and like, I, I oh, you have that like mask that like I got the yeah. altitude yeah. mask. Yeah, my trainer is uh, CJ. What's up, man? You're probably not listening, but I'll let you. I'll get you in on this. <laughs> um, so he uh, he's a baseball player, and by trade, uh, 28 years old, turned 29. So I can't let these young guys beat me up. So he's yeah. like, I, he came home with a mask one day, and I was like, I'm, you get a mask? I'm going to get a mask. <laughs> so it's altitude training. You can, you can go up to, to as high as like 29,000 feet. So it just cuts your oxygen. It basically cu- it deprives you of oxygen. My brother has a few yeah. clients. My brother owns a gym, and um, he has a few clients that wear, wear it when they work yeah. out. Yeah, it's a sick workout. Why does it help? Uh, I thought you want to get oxygen to your muscles. You, you do, but you're depriving your, you're depriving your red blood cells of oxygen. And it improves and makes them bigger. Improves the capabilities or the wanting of that oxygen, so that when you rip that sucker off and then you start doing everyday life things, yeah, it doesn't affect you. Really? Yeah, it's great. I gotta get one of those because when I, mask, I walk up the stairs, I'm out of breath. You gotta get a mask. <laughs> Derek T. Uh, um, man, I don't know. I've always been an athlete too. I work out. I think I I, I think I agree that you know. Sports and athleticism and that whole camaraderie and everything kind of just feeds the other end of it too. Like, uh, you know, clear mind. After you work out, you have like the clearest mind. Like, so I'm gonna go athleticism on top, intellectual on the bottom. Is is athleticism and intelligence? Well, it's a skill and a. You know what I'm saying? Like it helps so, it. So like, here, so so are you asking? Do you have to be intelligent to be an athlete? No, no. What I'm saying is you're. Is your is the act of athleticism and intelligence? So, uh, the fact that Michael Jordan can jump high isn't that just his body having a more intelligent response to, I don't know, the twitch of a muscle or, you know, is it not its own intelligence? I think it's I think I think you can categorize it like that, but I'll take it to I'll take it to one step further. I don't think that Michael Jordan was born Michael Jordan. Yeah, he was he he has maybe some raw talent, but if you don't hone that, I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. It ain't it's not becoming that. So his in- intelligent or his in- intellectualism is actually his sport, his training, his mm-hmm. work ethic. All of those things that made Michael Jordan Michael Jordan it, it, he failed. I mean, that guy failed a lot. Right. I mean, anyone to, to get super successful and you have to, to fail a lot. Yeah, you have to fail a lot. And it's not about the failing. It's about getting, you know, dusting yourself off and sure. picking yourself up. And I think it's like an intellectual drive that fuels the athleticism. Well, where's the, where's the correlation between an intellect and athleticism in, like, Wayne Gretzky? All right, why could he see the ice better than anybody else? What, what else would he have been really good at if it weren't ice hockey? Is it, like, an eye-hand thing? Is it a... As it like uh, you can break down situations faster than other people, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So isn't it still? It's definitely. In, it's in, there's a you need to be great. You need to be intelligent. There's. It's in, I don't know. I've seen some guys talk that play in the NFL that don't <laughs> seem to be too intelligent. Well, when it comes who, to the like sport who? hockey, maybe they're very. But they're, but they may. But, but they're, maybe the maybe maybe verbally they don't talk very intelligently. Right. But but they can. Split but they can, they can. They can. Yeah. They, <laughs> probably football. Right. Probably football wise, they're pretty intelligent. Yeah. I right. mean, they could probably see things, and they're, they're intelligent in different ways. They may see visually, they may see things happening that you and I would take, you know, right. forever to yeah. see. Yeah, Peyton Manning's a perfect example. Perfect example. Perfect right? example. Like the way he gets up and says, sees that. So, yeah. So I don't know. Like I don't know how to answer this question. And I'm it's gonna. A tough one. I wanted to say like intellect because it doesn't fade, but then I was thinking, well, intellect does fade, and athleticism totally fades too. So I guess I don't know, man. I guess uh, yeah. In our society, if I'm going to answer as an American, I'm going to say athleticism's on top. Yeah, bro. You know I what I mean? So. I think you're right. Topper because you're great with me. <laughs> top or bottom <laughs> number two. Well said. Uh, top or bottom World Series or Super Bowl? Oh man, that's easy for me. I'm a, I'm football all the way. Super Bowl, uh, World Series. I, I was never a huge baseball fan. I'm probably. I don't know why. I think it just wasn't something that registered with me. Um, but um, football for me, it's one game. You get one shot. World Series is seven games. <laughs> you know, too much, too too drawn out for me. You know, 
Um, so, Super Bowl. Yeah. I like it. I, uh, I loved baseball. I loved playing baseball, but football is my top number one. Uh, I'm actually playing my uh, Neptune uh, alumni game on Friday. What? Yeah, we're not not full pay. It's flag. Oh, okay. But um, but yeah, for, <laughs> Super Bowl on top, World Series on the bottom. I mean, it's not. A, I, I'm not even going to entertain it. Although I do have a Yankee hat on. I mean, it's Super Bowl, clearly. I think, uh, even though I, I do believe that the NFL is at its decline, I feel like it's dying from the bottom I, up. I think the question should have been Super Bowl or World, uh, what do you call it, the World Cup, soccer. Oh, because you think soccer has surpassed, like baseball doesn't even matter at this point? I think it's World America, Cup. I think, I think World, yeah, I don't think in America. I think World Series in America is huge. But I think World Cup, when, when the World Cup games are on. Oh, yeah. I think America's into it. I think worldwide, yeah. it's phenomenal. Worldwide yeah. soccer is the biggest. Yeah, here football. Huge. I agree the with biggest. that. I agree with that. But yeah. like, yeah, like World Cups on, man. I'm all into. I'm it. all 100%. into that. Yeah. I do not agree though with the uh, World Series thing because uh, let me paint this picture. Okay. If uh, if Jacksonville Jaguars in the NFL play the Tennessee, t- that can't even happen. But if Jacksonville plays Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl, I'm not watching it. Yeah, you are. You're at a party where people I'm, are watching I'm, it. I'm, but I'm not paying attention. But, but you're but at I'm a party at, and the game's it's right? It's on the TV. Okay. If the, if the I don't know, the Tampa Bay Rays play. The Kansas City the, Royals. Are you watching the World Series? <laughs> no. Nah. Not for one no. second. If the Yankees aren't, if the Yankees aren't out. playing, I'm pretty much not paying attention. If the attention. Mets make it this year, you still don't watch. But I, if the Cubs I, make it, I kind of want to watch. I'll watch. <laughs> I'll watch. I'll watch just because. Um, it's a New York team. Yeah. But yeah. it's not I'm it's not I'm not I'm not like sweating it. Yeah. At all. Oh, <laughs> at all. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> at all. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Top or bottom number three, performing or instructing. Ooh, man, you're hitting me hard, man. Oh, it's all about I love you, man. to teach. I love to teach. But I love doing. So performing is top. Okay. Teaching, instructing is bottom. But you have to understand something. When I perform, I'm teaching because I have a lot of residents that rotate with me and other young doctors coming up through the ranks. So typically my performing is usually involved with instructing, but I have to be doing it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I uh, instructing is fun. I actually spoke at my college this past uh, Tuesday, nice. did like a whole thing, which was pretty cool. Oh, cool. Um, but um, yeah, performing on top, instructing on bottom. You have like this whole life that we never talk about. <laughs> I don't know. Like you they, know. they asked me back. Uh, I did this whole like did this mashup event, and then I'm gonna go. Uh, they want me to speak to. They really love the whole story and the whole vibe of it. That it's, it could be more than just arts and communications. So I want me to talk to like a bigger student body. So, cool, so, man. Yeah. I don't know. Perfect. I think I feel We're like performing uh, on top. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like in, in instruct when you're instructing something, you're performing anyway. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. You, ha- you know, teachers are performers. One hundred percent. You're, on, you're yeah. on stage, man. So. Uh, I, I got to say, performing is on top. I'd rather perform than instruct anything any day, even even though it's one and the same. My next question was gonna. I'm scratching this one. You don't have to answer. But I was gonna say Grey's Anatomy or a bucket of shit. <laughs> bucket of shits on top. <laughs> That's what I figured. That's why. <laughs> what was the one you asked me? <laughs> Oh, you're like Derek Sher. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. now and then when something strikes me, I always put it up against a bucket of shit just to see how it responds. But I, I knew you wouldn't like Grey's Anatomy. I think I used to, but, yeah, it's hard, man. I live that stuff all the time. So is there any reality? Is it based on, <clears throat> I mean, come on, at this point? It's so dramatized. It's like, I don't know. I stopped watching like years and years ago. Mm-hmm. But, any you know, some, any it, medical drama? Yeah, I mean, some of the terminology that they use is it's cool because you yeah. know they're, they're like talking about you know pneumothorax and the lung is collapsed and and that stuff is cool. And, are you ever like that would never work? Yeah, You're I'm gonna like, kill them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you guys are off a little bit, but that's whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually pretty accurate. I guess. Yeah, to, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Well, they, they, I know they consult a lot. Of, they do. They have a the consult. Oh, they have they to, consult right? doctors. No matter what sure. kind yeah. of show you're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. <laughs> The real question is, uh, top or bottom, Dollar Shave Club or Wooly Mammoth? Dollar Shave Club or <laughs> Wooly Mammoth? I think, I think we all know the answer. Dollar Shave Club. Dude. Dollar Shave Club's on top? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> when is the last time you shaved? Uh, I think you meant like nice beard. or <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. calling you a Wooly Mammoth. Uh, here's, I know. I know. I got that. He's a doctor, <laughs> goddammit. I know. But here's the thing. I get trims every two weeks, bro. You keep I it go, trim. You gotta go keep to it right barber. tight. It's a solid beard, dude. I go to the barber. You know, he he trims he trims me up. He he twists my mustache for me. Waxes me up. It's all good. It, it's a, it's a kind of a. I don't know, man. My wife loves the beard. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm digging the beard. I like it. I, don't dude. Know I dig it. I'm not I'm not I, ragging on no, it at no, all. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. You know, beard beard on top, bro. Listen, if I'm going to be operated on, 
I, I do not. I want to be operated on, you know, you. Like, I don't want I get a guy some interesting, that's... I get some interesting looks, for sure, when yeah. I first walk into rooms. Yeah. Well, you know, it's... It's distracting sometimes. No, I think I think it's a sign. I, I think it's a sign of brilliance. You know what I mean? I think highly intelligent people have. Who's inter- it, Samson that had the beard? Yeah, yeah the hair. Yeah, yeah, the hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So here, I had an interesting. I was at the gym working out one morning, and, and a guy working out next to me. He's like, he's like, you know, if I ever need anything done, he goes, I'm coming to you. I go, why? He goes, because if you can look like the way you do, and be successful, he goes, imagine if you didn't look like that, you'd probably be. Three times as much success. See, I don't know. If <laughs> and I, I'm like, I think the opposite. I'm like, I don't know about that. Exactly. I don't feel that way. I don't know. F- it took me a while. I mean, my wife has been my number one supporter in the in the look. Um, she, she'll she'll tell you she's like she created this, and she's probably right. You know? <laughs> I, I don't um, want a, a guy super clean cut, primmed and proper, yeah. like taking care of me medically because he's more concerned about himself than me. And I don't mean. Oh, bro, I'm I'm definitely concerned about myself <laughs> for sure. No, but you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm not putting down. No, I'm I not saying you. you don't look. No, put together I, because no, you I do. Hear, no, I but it's you. a it's a look it's a put together look yeah. that also says, you know, I don't give a fuck. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah you can say whatever you want right. to say. Yeah. I'm I'm comp- it's a compliment. Yeah, right? I, I, I I don't I, think it's that a lot. It's, no, I, I don't think we thought. <laughs> no, 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 I, no a, I didn't think. I mean, you showed up in a suit. You're the first PBR guest ever to show up in a suit. Yeah, I was gonna say, fly fresh to death. That suit, hell yeah, slim fit. I was I was working it for you guys, man. I wasn't coming in jeans. I was gonna wear some like cut off shirts, but then I was like, nah. I'm, a video I'm in sweats <laughs> T-shirt uh, What was the question again? It was uh, Dollar Shave Club or Wooly Mem Yeah, dude, I'm Wooly Mem Oh, uh, Top. I, I don't even use Dollar Shave I haven't shaved their actual razor And really lot of like a buzzer Because I keep it at about this scruff level Yeah So I guess I'll go Wooly Mammoth Although yeah, that, yeah. I'm very uh, trimmed otherwise Oh, uh, oh <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't even talking about oh. that man. Come on, come on Well, I don't know why I don't shave my face anymore with a razor Dennis! <laughs> get uh, get Derek a razor every night. I just yelling for our intern Dennis uh, uh, yeah. somewhere yeah, around yeah. here. Where is that guy? Uh, he's such a, you want to yell for him? If you Dennis, any, where oh, are you, buddy? Again, you see that? <laughs> it's really amazing when every time I ask a guest to yell for Dennis, they always yell the same way. I want you to just break it down for a second. Hold on. All right, we're gonna get serious. Here okay, for a second, bro. All right. <laughs> you let me get, really let me, let me get this get, real close here. Get closer. What's up, dude? All right, you really need something from Dennis. All right, mm-hmm. now you need it now. You gotta. He's not here. You gotta call for him. He's like your intern. Give it to us. Like, oh, he's he's my little whipping. He's, yeah, he's yeah. my little whipping. You gotta boy. fit your body on the table, face cut open. There's blood everywhere. Oh, man. You need Dennis. How do you do it? Dennis. <laughs> that was better. How's it that going? Better. How's it going? I like. I gotta say, Wooly Mammoth too, man. I I don't ever shave, unless forced. Oh, I shave my head every three days, but I don't use a razor. I. I it, are you, are you shaving because you feel like you're thinning, or is it just... Oh, no, I'm bald, man. Oh, you're like, bald? Yeah, I'm totally bald. Yeah, see, if I if I start to lose stuff, I'm shaving it. Yeah. Mm. It's coming off. There's you no got reason. long hair, right? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of long. You know, there was a Kickstarter for a laser razor. Anybody see this? They raised, like, 25 times what they put out for their Kickstarter. Uh, and, uh, and it was a joke? Well, well it, they had no prototype, so Kickstarter defunded them. Good. But they wow. raised millions and millions so of dollars. So where'd that money go? Went right back to the people? I could go back to the people. Yeah, they just don't I fund it so. out. I hope so. I feel like not I all. I feel like they, yeah. they probably kept it. So I feel like some of it was skimmed off the top. For sure. There's no way. Seriously. Top or bottom number five, elective surgery or mandatory surgery? Wow. Bro, you're like, you're hitting me in the core well, Manol, the, in the, the uh, core of what I do, man. The show is Pizza Beer Revolution, right? The pizza and the beers will get you in the room, but the show's really all about the guests, the man, revolution. Man, so. you are like really sticking it to me. These are not easy questions. Um, elective or mandatory? <sighs> man, this is like dead. This is like radio silence. This is crazy. Um, I think. <clears throat> can I give you like. It depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I guess. How about when I'm doing elective, electives on top, and when I'm doing reconstructive, <laughs> reconstructive. All right. So here's the deal. Um, personally, uh, I, I, I get such great satisfaction out of doing, like, cleft lip and palate stuff and reconstruction and all those, you know, injuries that I was telling you about before. But um, electively, like, that's where, you know, I, I love that. Um, but if, I ha- if you had to, like, just chop me out, one or the other, I'd have to say, stick me, stick me in the in the necessary mandatory surgeries mm-hmm. if I had to, uh, just because I feel like I'm th- those people really need me more. How, how often is that? Do you say no? Um, Not a good idea. 
I, I probably say daily, um, and for various reasons. You know, people come in with some crazy requests. Um, I probably have should I should have said no more in my life. Um, <laughs> you know, a, you know, a sign of a good surgeon isn't knowing when to do surgery; it's when not to do surgery. Um, so I think you know we all have you know, and in, in at least from talking to my colleagues, we all have you know people that we probably wish we never operated on, and they're just like the albatross, and you see them on the schedule, and you're like, holy shit, I got to deal with this. But <laughs> that's few and far between, and um, you know, you just want a good a good barometer is, hey, would I do this on my dad? Would I do this on my sister, my mom, my wife? Um, and if the answer is yes, then then you think it works for them. Then you go for it. If not, adios. Mm. I have so many Is that, uh, questions, I mean, questions off that. <laughs> uh, was it mandatory or elective? Uh, how, how are we supposed to answer that? I don't know. I mean, I, I guess. <laughs> well, you, you have. All right. So how about in life? You got stuff that you can go to or shit you have to go to. Yeah. And you had, you had elective surgery on your nose. True. So right, elective on top. Mandatory yeah. on the bottom. But if you need to get something done. To live. Right, that's mandatory. <laughs> that should be on top then. That's on right? top. Yeah, I think that's on top. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's on top. Well, you're bottom. looking at it from a, as a patient perspective. I'm looking at it as yeah. a performing. Yeah. So so. So performing's on top. So you, you just talked about uh you just talked about you know, people coming in and doing some crazy things. What is the you, you know, obviously no names you could beat around the right. bush, whatever, right. but what what is the craziest thing? That you did, and what's the craziest thing that you didn't? <laughs> okay. Oh man, craziest thing I did. Um, and I don't even know if you you don't even have to answer that question. That I'm thinking about it. You don't have to answer <laughs> it if you don't want to. But what's the craziest thing you didn't? Let's start. That. All right, let's do that. Um, craziest thing I didn't do. Um, oh man, what's the crazy? I don't know, man. That's a tough one. There's like, th- like a request someone came in with, like, what, can you do this to me? You're like, are you Is that the kidding? three-assed monkey? Yeah. <laughs> you want you know, a third boob? You can't give me. You, you know, I get a lot of requests from 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 women, younger women, to um, really, like, super inflate their lips. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's kind of a weird – I mean, listen, I'm, I, I do this stuff every day, so there's a certain amount I think is awesome – and then there's a certain amount where you start to look like almost like just lips. Yeah, you're just like this. Yeah, you're just all lips. And it's tough um, because you know they're going to go somewhere else to get it done. Someone's going to do Someone's it. Someone's going to do it. Yeah, and someone, someone will take the money. They want to throw money at their lips, which is whatever. Um, what, what do you blame for that, man? What do I blame? I had for a that? different way of asking that question too, but I want to see if you're on page, on board with me. Like, a celebrity of this. It, it is. I mean, there is there is there is this there's this image that's on TV that you know or Vogue or whatever that every every time that that person wakes up or that celebrity wakes up, they look like the way they look on camera or the way they look on zero start. chance. And not only <laughs> zero chance, it doesn't it doesn't even exist. Yeah, like that even. Even if you were to show these people, and I'm going to use Kardashians because they're the that's exactly what number I was one. Ask you, do you blame them? Of course, I blame. I don't blame them, but they, you can't blame someone on TV for your actions. I mean, it's hard to do that. I mean, but they they have, but they have taken it to a level of like. And now the young one, the young one was gorgeous. Now she's just uglifying herself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's her lips are way too big. Yeah. It's like what you were pretty. Now you're making yourself not pretty. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's oh, rough. Man. It's, a, it's, it's the a, worst. It's, it's, it's a it's a very fine line on what looks good and what looks yeah. great. And then and then with young kids like 16, 17, 18 years old, you can for sure make yourself look older. Yeah. By doing this stuff, and that's not necessarily what you want either. No. Why so you have a lot of young kids coming in wanting to. No, nah, they're in their twenties. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I consider I'm young. I'm I consider that young. I'm 41. Right. So I consider 20 young. That's young. I mean, I mean, it's too young to be starting. Uh, you know, you can you can do surgery. certain things, and it's fine. Like rhinoplasties on teenagers, I get that because you know there's some you know they're, they're, they feel the confidence is low. You know, they may be made fun of. Um, so you know, doing a rhinoplasty on a on a on a girl or a guy or you know whatever when they're in like they're 16, 17, 18, I think that's I think that falls within the norm. I think corrective ear surgery for like kids who have really big oh, that, prominent like, ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean all that stuff. Those are those are those are self image things that can be corrected. But to sit there and do like big lips mm-hmm. on you know on a you know 
16, 18 year old, mm-hmm. whatever. That's, They're not even done growing. No, <laughs> no. It's and it, and it's just not right. I mean, it's not right. I mean, that whole uh, what was that shot glass uh, thing that was going on? Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, ridiculous. The, the that? something challenge. Who was yeah. it? The Kim Kardashian yeah. challenge? Yeah, I don't know that? what it was, it was called. Something. It was oh. one of the Kardashians started it. Oh really? Or it was it was after she got her lips done. The oh, other. it was the Kendall. Yeah. yeah. That, that, how, how does a how does it snowball through a whole family, man, and to the point where their father is going through a, a sex change, right? A uh, Bruce Gender. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, Bruce Gender. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, man, I, I can't believe it. I still can't. Still believe crazy. It. I'm still crazy. Like the guy, the way I see him is on my Wheaties box. I first started eating Wheaties. Yeah. You know, it was like 19. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the way I remember it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's complicated. I mean, it's just not simple. Is it? A, is that like a, I mean, is it a genetic mental flaw or is it vanity at its worst? I mean, is it just that they are all competing with one another? It's normal in their life? I mean, how does that happen, man? That, first of all, that's a, that, that whole Kardashian phenomenon, and it is a phenomenon if you think about it. Like, what are they actually, what? Exactly. At the what, core, what, what are they doing? What are they doing? I mean, they're just living their lives. That's it. But their father was the uh, the attorney, one of the attorneys on the OJ, right? On OJ, their, their stepfather was one right. of the best athletes right. we've ever. Yeah. And you know, and 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 you know, but it's very complicated because you know, they, they what are they offering? But then again, everyone's watching. Crazy. So what does that say about our society I know. versus what does it say about and especially, They're just cashing in. Yeah, especially for someone like me who's like a working actor, a working host, and a, right. a comedian in this industry, just right. like you know, auditioning every day and, and getting jobs here. Well, obviously I have a steady gig, but sure. like – it's still, it's still, it's still a struggle, and it's like I'm working my ass off, and along with a ton of other people, oh, of course. and they're just like doing nothing, and just getting, you know, a hundred grand to go to a club and go, oh my god, and hit the button. Is that not what? Is it? Is that not what they want people to do? The sheeple, right? They want you to sit home and eat bonbons and watch the Kardashians and get these cancers and not. Give money to Stelsem to fix your issues because exactly. you're fat. So you can pay the drug companies money. Rope uh, to, everything to in. keep their pockets. You just rope, you roped it in, bro. Is that pretty much it? And <laughs> robots. I mean, that's pretty close. When did the robots come? When are the robots? Are the robots save, coming soon? Save the robots. After the Remember cat genocide. Place? <laughs> Sa- what was that? Save the robots. What was that from? That was a club in Manhattan. There was a club yeah, called yeah, Save the yeah. Robots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. What year are we talking that about? That was bad. It was <laughs> a bad year. <laughs> <laughs> Save the robots. I don't ask, know. ask Maddie B. He'll tell you. <laughs> Shout out to Maddie B. Hey B. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I was just I was watching uh, Saturday Night Live uh, this weekend, and Amy Schumer was on. And she got a lot of shit for for making fun of them. Of she made fun of Chloe. All right. Who cares? That's all I was about to bring. I watched the clip on. I didn't see it, but I watched it on YouTube. Yeah. I thought it was great. She 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 did. She just, yeah. She's like, we had Chloe. Us yeah. bigger girls, we had. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was funny. And then she attacked Chloe. Uh, fires back on Twitter, yeah. which which when you think about it is. You're Come typing on, 140 Hun- letters. Like she beat attacked it on social media. Like you have the direct. You know, 20 years ago, how would she have gotten? No, back she here? wouldn't even known. She for, she probably right. if she didn't watch Saturday Night Live. She wouldn't have known. And and we didn't watch Saturday Night Live. But you don't need to watch well, TV she, anymore. You just get a, a Twitter feed or yeah. whatever, so she you know not, what's going on. She would have. She would have not known so fast. I mean, she would have probably know if it like the like right. The Maybe the next day, picked if the paper up picked it up. Yeah, but right. like, yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. It's like, and it's what are you, Twitter tough guy? Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's a true term, man. There are Twitter tough guys out there. That's crazy. Anything that's anonymous is irrelevant. If you're not gonna, if it's not coming from you with your name stamp on it, it's irrelevant. Just it, do, it shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's nonsense. You know what I mean? <sighs> do you think? Do you think that they tweet for themselves? By the way, not all of them, but I believe that tweet probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I think them. I think the Kardashians like do like, um, yeah, because that's that's all they have is that social media. Think about it, that's yeah. the social whether it's them being on talk shows anybody, and that is their life. Sure. That's what and I, that's their their Instagram, all that stuff. Like look at like uh, like if, I don't even know if Bill Murray has a Twitter, but if he does, it's not him tweeting that right. stuff. You know, you know what I mean? Like or, or well, I or, think that's a terrible example because I think if it is Bill Murray, Bill Murray definitely is tweeting. It's probably amazing. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? all right, but you know, like a p- picture, like a very like, yeah, yeah, prominent I get it. Like Brad, Brad Pitt's not tweeting, but yeah, yeah. Brad Pitt has a Twitter, and Brad Pitt's people yeah. are tweeting for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? The only reason I say Bill Murray was a te- terrible example is like Bill Murray. Well, I just love no Bill management Murray. or anything. <laughs> right, right. If you can get Bill Murray's number and leave him a message about a project, he, he calls will, you back. If he likes it, he will call you back. That's insane. That's how Bill Murray operates. You need to get his You number. can't call his people. <laughs> he has you, no people. Can no, fi- that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, you great. have to call Bill. <laughs> I have a project. Can I fix his nose? Does he have a problem with his nose? Oh, he's got a big nose, man. 
Bill yeah, but he's Bill Murray. I like, know, right? I mean, you can't mess with his nose. But that's the thing. It's like Fix look his at, eyelids. No, well, sorry, Bill. I love you. Talk to me about the eyelid. You keep bringing up the eyelid. Is that like a fascinating thing to work with? No, it's an, it's just a simple little thing. It's easy to say. Who was the one actress? <laughs> oh, the actress in uh, Dan, uh, Dan, not uh, Dirty Dancing. Jennifer she, Grey. She like she had no surgery, and then she wasn't yeah. getting jobs anymore. Yeah. It's because they look. Yeah, you know, it's that character thing. Look at uh, she looked good. Um, uh, she did look good. Yeah. Got, she look looked good. Michael Strahan. Yeah. You know, that's his character, the guy. Yeah, don't fix the teeth. Yeah, not he fixing won't fix that. the teeth. He doesn't need to fix the teeth. Well, could you fix those teeth? Uh, I probably couldn't, but I know someone can fix that. Yeah. yeah. Anyone, <laughs> yeah that can be fixed. There's no big deal. You could just put that, well, you break the jaw and you put it back he together. He needs braces, man. Braces, come on. Pull them together, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they a lot of people talk about like uh, Barbara Streisand, right? You would never, she would she never, she would never touch her nose. No, because that would mess, mess would with her voice. Her voice, and it would just, you know, it just wasn't. It would have messed her up, man. And that's that's that happens. But if she did it before she became Barbara Streisand, oh, that, yeah, yeah, no one would know the difference. So right, and she, but she might not. She may not like have Barbara had that voice Streisand, exactly, right? I mean, that's kind of how it works. Pretty much. Sometimes you get cast because of that. Th- those those type of little nuances, of how you look or whatever. You know, it's. To think. Of course, there's, there's so many. It's, you don't want to look. You don't want to look average. You don't want to look normal. You want to. You want to have something that separates you out. Sure. Let's talk about separation. How do you separate yourself mentally from what you're actually doing? When you when you have someone on the table, how do you remove? You know, you can't go. Oops. Right, like, well, um, you can if you want, but you try not. Have you ever been working on I'm working on something? Like, oh fuck! Oh, you can't. Uh, you can't answer like, that. No, the answer is no. Move on. Never, <laughs> never have I ever. Uh, never in the sense where. I actually fucked up. But it was like drama- a dramatic, like, oh, this is bad thing. Yeah, you um, probably. I, I think you maybe know, you dropped the scalpel and you <clears throat> hit the guy in the, the face. or something. No, I never did that. But I, <laughs> you know, you know, you do. You, you operate, and you know, in in surgery, there's things that happen, and and it's you know, some things are no big deal, and then some things are like, oh shit, um, you know, the the elective cases, you don't really get the whole sh- the whole shit yeah. type of reaction, but like the trauma cases where there's broken bones and shards of bone and. Things that are just not not normal, and, and the anatomy's off. I mean, you can hit blood vessels, and you're and you're sitting there trying to stop the bleeding for mm. for ah, you know, a good you know what feels like 10, 15 minutes, which is only like a minute, but you're just you're hyped up, and and you know it, it sets a, it sets a tone. Wow, for sure. Yeah. It's you a ever, high pressure job. I mean, ever, is, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure on you. Is there ever a moment like you're kind of you're kind of shocked, like you you see something that you didn't know was there? Yeah, I. There, there, it's funny. It's um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it, there's always there's always something that's in a case that can pop up and and shock you and and be like, whoa, man, I, I wasn't expecting that, or mm-hmm. I thought that was gonna go smoother or whatever. Um, and the the you know the longer you do this stuff, you know, the more you respect it, and the more you know you should you know always be afraid. You know, mm-hmm. I kind of always have that little chip on my shoulder. You always want to have that kind of sense of you gotta urgency. be on keep you on edge gotta be on edge C- combined be. all how many years of schooling was it all combined out of out of high school like yeah after, after high, high school you thir- went, went pre-med years. 13 years 13 years 13 years, 13 yeah. years. I, fin- I finished i opened up my practice when i was 31 i started building my practice when i was 31 i act the door opened when i was 32 so that wow. was yeah it's wild man and the thing is is that you go through it and you're like, oh, it's just another, you know, this, another that. And you don't realize how fast time flies. Oh, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, I know. The day to day is super slow because it's like, a, it's a grind and it's a test. It's a this, a that. It's, you know, and then you turn around, five years are gone, 10 years are gone, 15 years are gone. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm practicing 10 years. It's like, it's crazy. What the heck just happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, man. It's crazy. All right, I got another game for you. All right, man. I like games. Do you? <laughs> yeah. We haven't played this one in a while. It's called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you three names. This, this just for you. All right, bro. Derek, you can chime in. One of them's good, one of them bad, one of them is ugly. It's This is Good, The Bad, The Ugly, Under the Knife Edition. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right. All right, man. Number one, Good, The Bad, The Ugly, Sharon Osbourne, Priscilla Presley, or Courtney Love? <laughs> Wow. And All never right. once did we really think about what if he doesn't know who these people are. No. When we sure put this game together. They are. So if you have questions, we can just, Dennis! <laughs> get the cue cards. All right. Give me the three games again. Uh, the, these three are Sharon Osbourne, Priscilla Presley, and Courtney Love. All right. Courtney Love is definitely bad. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty bad. That uh, <laughs> yeah, Courtney Love's bad. Priscilla Presley's ugly. 
Really? And I, I get and you're giving and Sharon Osbourne uh, good Sharon. Okay, I was gonna give Sharon. I'd do the same thing because yeah. she's like funny. She's like so, a, she's a ball buster. Yeah, she has a lot of places. Priscilla, yeah, Priscilla Presley used to be hot. hot. Yeah. Are we talking pre-surgical? No, we're talking after post right? post yeah. retarded. This is the under the knife. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, but anyway, I'm sorry about that. But no, absolutely after the knife for sure. Priscilla Presley's ugly. All right, do, can we get Ozzy Osbourne in the room to answer that question? Does we, do we know Ozzy? <laughs> we don't know. Is Ozzy uh, here? Is that, I, Ozzy's he's not I here. Think, I don't know if he's here. Maybe he'll come. Yeah, I don't have to think about Maybe, it. Yeah. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Melanie Griffith, Axl Rose, or Dontella Versace. Did Axl Rose have Donatella? 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 I said Versace? it wrong. I said it was 60%. Right. Bro, did Axl that's... Rose have face? Oh, dude, he looks terrible. He did, right? <laughs> I know he looks terrible. I thought he just got real fat. No, oh, he's just dude, he's he, bad. That, right. that too, I think. All right. Who's, who's the best out of all that? Jeez. Uh, I, I guess we got to go. I guess we have to go with. All right, who was the first one again? Uh, Melanie Griffith, Axl Rose, oh or God. Versace. Those are terrible, terrible the nightmares, man. <laughs> can you fix them? <laughs> yes. Where can, can they find you on Twitter? I can fix them, but <laughs> oof. All right. Um, I think Melanie Griffith might have to be like the best one out of all that. Mm. The good. So she's the good. She's the good. Axl must be the bad. Um, and then Donatella. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'll, yeah. Get, I'll go along. I got, with that. I got the same thing. Axl, man. Oh, I used to love Guns N' Roses. Oh, he. Totally it's fell off just the edge. a little patience. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I that's, love that. That's man. an old that one, too. And Slash doesn't age, man. Look at that guy. He doesn't. But <laughs> behind his hair, but... Yeah. <laughs> on the Axel Rose thing, though, do you, do you find a, a connection between people who kind of go off the edge and plastic surgery? Is there is there a connection there? Go off the edge? Mentally? Yeah, like, uh, of course. I mean, I think, you know, I think some people who go drastic plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery, whatever you want to call it, when they go drastic... Um, <clears throat> It's a type of it's a it's a it's a personality. It's a type of yeah. personality, and there's probably some imbalances somewhere, for sure. Top or bottom number three, Barry. Top Ma or bottom, bro. Oh, so, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, Under bro. the knife edition. My bad. I, yeah. my Sixty percent. It's okay. Uh, Barry Manilow, Joan Rivers, or Michael Jackson. Oh man. Barry Manilow is the only one still alive out of that group. Right? All right. So. Yep. <laughs> Michael Jackson's alive. He is. <laughs> All right. He also never had surgery. Um, <laughs> and he's white. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, who's the second one? Barry Manilow, Joan Rivers, and Michael Jackson. All right, Joan Rivers is probably going to be... <laughs> All right, Mike, Mike's just ugly. I mean, he's just... He, he was ugly. Yeah, he was a great he, performer. He wasn't he was ugly. always ugly, though. He was no, like a cute little kid. No, pre, pre, pre Jackson five. is awesome. Awesome. Right? I mean, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. Mm -hmm. Huge. Of course. Um, <laughs> all right, so he's... he's, he's uh, what did I say, ugly? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's ugly. Uh, bad is um, who are the other two? Barry Manilow and Joan Rivers. Barry Manilow's bad. No, hold on. Let me do this. <laughs> You're all hold up. on. Let me fuck Bar Bar hold on. Manilow Rivers Jackson. Right. Jackson is, he's bad. Jackson's oh, bad. And not oh, for the right. bad reason. Right. He's him. bad. His bad right. isn't good. He's, in ba he's bad. Okay. <laughs> then we got Manilow is ugly. And then whatever. She's Joan good. Rivers Girl, is good. She's good. Yeah. I would say, thanks. Joan Rivers is great. I, she was. She was. She great. embraced she, her surgery. She made did. fun of herself. Like, I will it, tell you this. She. You look at her. She's. A, she's a freak. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. But at the same, and God rest her soul. I mean, she's. She. But she did it, man. She did it, and she did it right, and she used it as a shtick. And she was hilarious. But also, it was her downfall. Like, right. I mean, I, I think the doctors kind of messed up. Right. I don't know the whole story, but like, I don't know the whole story either. You probably won't get the whole story ever. <laughs> yeah, it was something like she bled out or yeah. something on the table, which yeah. shouldn't happen when you're getting fake something. But she was having something done oh, with her throat. Yeah, right, throat yeah. or something. Oh, that's right. She died from it all. I forgot. Yeah. Like It was a surgery she didn't need, put it that way. Right. Elective Top or bottom. Yeah, elective or bottom, baby. <laughs> Top or bottom. Uh, number four, good, bad, the ugly. Kenny Rogers, Janice Dickinson, or Mickey Rourke? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a oh, good man, that's one. A, that's, that's a good, good one. one. All right. So um, Janice Dickinson is going to have to be the good. Mm-hmm. The bad is going to be Rourke, and the ugly is Kenny Rogers. Too. I mean, Kenny Rogers doesn't even himself. look like him. But yeah. Mickey Rourke killed himself, too. Oh, Rourke, it's a, that's a tough category. That is. That is. That's Mickey theory. Rourke, though, like, he has a different look now, but it's getting certain roles, and he's doing, doing well. Right. But yeah, he looked way different. He was a good-looking guy. He was, he was a good-looking guy. He was a very good-looking guy. He was a stud, man. Yeah, man. And now he is terrifying. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a wrestler all, at all times. Yeah. Uh, Did you see the wrestler? Yeah, great movie. Yeah, great man. movie. As but he's also Park, man. Yeah. That thing was filmed out. Park, yeah, right? he was also good in um, as uh, the, the villain in Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, he was good. In that. Don't touch my bird. 
Number five, Jennifer Gray. There she is. Goldie Hawn had plastic surgery. Why would Goldie Hawn have plastic surgery? I love her. I think she did, though. And uh, William Shatner. Well, the, you know, the guy from Travelocity commercials. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all Shatner right. Has? Shatner. He's ugly. He, yeah. <laughs> He's ugly. Do we know William? Do, can we get him on the phone? <laughs> uh, he talks like Derek, a friend of ours, Derek DeAngelis. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> stop it. Who's the other two again? Uh, Jennifer Gray. Jennifer Gray's good. Goldie Hawn. She, she's bad. And William Shatner. Ugly. Ugly. Yeah. I think we all agree. Yeah, I think, you, I, I, think I think you win. I think I, I think you did a great I, job I, playing good to bed. Other rough man. I think those you won. Some, yeah, those are tough. Those are some <laughs> tough things. <laughs> I was gonna say something. I forgot. Damn. Really? It was related to what we were. Obviously, I like the music playing in the background. By the way, well, you know, you got you got a classic. Now, see this one. Now, what we're about to do here? Are we doing this calls? <laughs> What's that? Are we do. Are we are, are we dialing into the internet? <laughs> what is that? Uh, is sound? that AOL? What does that <laughs> exactly. sound mean to you? Dialing into the internet, bro. That's how you remember it, right? That's AOL. This oh. is a uh, segment we call the Armchair Futures. You know, right. pizza and the beer gets you in the room, but yeah. this shows all about the revolution of our guest, yeah, which right. is you, Doctor Manoli. There you go, man. Right in the year 2050, what is your industry going to look like? But before you answer that, Derek and I want to compete against each other, and I I think I have an unfair advantage. Do you remember AOL Instant Messenger? Yes. Did you, did you, did you have did you, a screen name? You, you you must have logged on. Don't say it, but you must have chatted. Well, not AOL Instant Messenger first. It was just AOL AIM, first. AIM. 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 No, no, not AIM. Well, AIM, yes, but regular AOL. Remember the, the chat? Yeah, you the also chat. remember your username. You know, like your tag. Kind of, yeah. Okay, yeah, we're going to guess yeah, against right. each other what it might have been. Okay. You don't remember it? Though? You don't remember it at all? I, I have it. I, it might be. Yeah, I, I might have it. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Did you have another one yes, for AIM? No, I know, I do. I have an, I got it. I know. You got it? Right, you know what it is? Yeah, what is it? All right, Derek, you want to go first? All right, so the, the, uh, were you always a Pittsburgh fan? Yeah. You can't, you can't are, are we, interrogate are we, him. Are we, I just asked one question. Uh, interrogating? I mean, you can, you can. Well, it's not really in the rules. If you want to interrogate, right. go ahead, because I do have an unfair advantage. Because you went to. We, we grew up, we grew right. up together. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 it's something with sports or athletics. You're talking about my AOL, my, my screen name? Yeah. yeah. Dude, come on! <laughs> when when do you, when do you start chatting on AOL? You had to be in college, right? I you was a senior in college. For AIM, AIM AOL, it's all the same, isn't it? Uh, the chat rooms, right? You talking about yeah, the chat? Yeah, 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 yeah. H sex location, yeah, yeah whatever. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, Manoli, man, that's a cool name. So it's not like Manoli Canoli. He wouldn't do that. It's like. Uh, oh, it's some with football, probably, or sports, or. I don't know. Um, uh, uh, so this is in college. It was in college, you said. Uh, you guys didn't look it up on AOL. No, we don't no, no. Which I, I'm really. I've like. I've actually two people. I've almost said it exactly. Their really? Name. Yeah, just pulling out of thin air. He gets it really close. Uh, you want me to go first? You go, yeah, you're yeah. floundering. So you you think you think I had something on football? Well, no. Then you said cal- you played football in, in high school. High but school. Then yeah. nice, you said you didn't get a screening from yeah. college though. So. It has nothing to do with football. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, then I'm going to go with the first one. I think he's. I don't think it has to do with college. I think it more would have to do with heritage and youth. I'm going to say it's like, uh, it's like Karate Kid '92. Not in college, dude. What? <laughs> he wouldn't put that as his name in college. Well, no, because Manoli was was he's a black belt yeah. in karate. No, I know, but that was when he was a kid. Yeah, but I, I said I'm gonna, he would go back to his youth for his all name. Right, all right. You're right, because he didn't. Well, don't say it. My yet. first guess was going to be like Assassin Six. Like oh, I, I want to say your number six. Was your number six? Seven. Seven. Close, man. Um. Uh, yeah, this is terrible for radio. Manoli man. <laughs> I don't know Manoli. It's like Manoli man or something. It's like Eminem. Like Eminem. All right, well, dude, you just nailed it. Yeah, right. I swear to God, it was M. Manolakakis. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because he get he's gotten it. Like we just started doing this, and he's got it almost every time. That was close. That, that was, was pretty exact. good. That was pretty good. <laughs> you worked it out. How, How do you do it? it man? How do you do that? Did you research him? I didn't research him at all. His name's awesome name, so it's got to be the name. I, th- I think you you showed your cards tonight. I think you've been cheating. I think he's cheating. I've never looked. 
I swear. I, I was thinking, because I was thinking high school, so I was like, you were big into football. No number, nothing. Just M. Manalakakis. M. M. Manalakakis, yeah. Impressive. And I don't even think it was the full Manalakakis. I, th- I think it, had, it, it was M. Manalakak. And it, it, <laughs> it, it was too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it stopped at the guy. Yeah. I was like, what? Uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was like an accident. But yeah, it, yeah, but it was funny. So I was like, so I went with it. 60% so you're, of the So you're a goddamn winner. Wow, man. man. How did you do that? I don't know. He's nailed people down to the number. I think I got you know? a number one. Like everyone always has a number. I got number. a number once. That's impressive, um, man. So the year is 2050. You're sitting back in your re- reclining oh, chair. Yeah, that question again. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, What does your industry look like? My industry? Um, I, I think that the aesthetic world is going to try to become as, as non-invasive and non-surgical as possible. Um, I think when we look at industry as far as like – Health industry, I think, you know, we're going to be super computerized. You know, we're already starting to see these things, these apps on our iPhones, blood pressure, mm-hmm. sugar, all everything. So everything's going to be really super um, kind of like uh, computerized. And I think, I think um, by 2015, that's really only... Tw- no, no, 2050, 2050. 35 2050, years. oh man, that's, that's far ahead, man. I, I, I'm hoping we're doing like... Just for, like just, Star just for the Trek record, scanners and it all is that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I yeah, he's had a long day. <laughs> no, I know. He's cutting open rough, people. Dude, I had a rough day, man. I'll go into that later. But um, yeah, I think uh, 2015. Yeah, I think I think we're going to be doing some Star Trek train uh, scanners and and here, take this pill. It's going to take care of everything. I, I I just think that's where it's headed. How how far off are we? Um, Ray Kurzweil, um, the exponential growth of technology, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, where he he. He says, and this was probably five years ago, so he's probably not far off, but in the next 10 years, if you don't have technology embedded into your body, you won't be able to keep up with technology. And he contends that uh, they'll have, uh, you know, blood, blood, um, blood cell-sized computers that flow through your body freely to report. How far off are we from wow. that kind of... Um, to zap, zap like cancer cells. Yeah. Well, just to report <laughs> as it flows through yeah, the blood. Yeah, just like as monitors, like a receptors. Sure. Is that something that you you know is way is that crazy? No, it's not. It's not really crazy because you know they they've already done like those types of things where you can go get things injected into you and then you go get a scan and it kind of tells you like where cancer is, you mm-hmm. know, or you know they're called PET scans. So mm-hmm. so here's the thing. I, I think I think it can definitely happen. I don't know if we're five ten years away from that. I think that's one of those things that definitely by the 20, <laughs> 2050, man, that's crazy. That's uh, we're gonna be doing stuff like that. Yeah, and, and what about this? And they may, I feel like there's some form of this already. Like, all right, it's it's 2050. Manoli's in, uh, he's in California right now, but uh, he's the only one that does this particular surgery. So we're gonna send him to a surgery hub. You put your hands in a thing. Well, that's happening and now, like, right? And it's yeah, literally like that stuff can happen now because you can have technicians set things up, and then you can be somewhere else remotely coming in and doing a surgery. Um, wait, wait, wait. What, <laughs> mind blown? <laughs> but it's not like you put your hands in something, right? And you're actually... Yeah, that well, exists. <clears throat> well, you're doing remote surgery. I mean, you, you robot, robotic surgery is remote from... You're not touching the patient. Um, so there's that, but there's a rope. Yeah, I mean, you're, 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 there's, a, there's stuff in the, in the body. You know. That's crazy. So that's essentially what I just said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have that. But, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and you can have people like logged in and, and kind of walk through other surgeons doing it. You know what I mean? So there's, that exists. Yeah. Um, I knew there was like remote stuff. I can, didn't realize it was can, that. Can the remote, can a doctor in the remote area actually be operating the, the, the robot? I, I wouldn't see why not. Do they do that? I don't know if they do that because I don't know if legally that's allowed. Yeah. Well, when, when does the robot <clears throat> take over the job of the doctor actually f- physically making incisions and sewing up and, uh, you know what I mean? As of right now, not that I know of. Um, Will they? Will, can they develop software to do that? Yeah, they can do. They can do that. Absolutely. Jeez. It's it's yeah, it's crazy. So I think cosmetically, aesthetic. I think aesthetic surgery, all that stuff is going to minimally invasive. Hey, take this pill. It's going to help your skin. It's going to do this. Can do that. Hair grow hair. <coughs> um, you know, skin is good. Teeth are good. I think that's. Yeah, the, think about I think the year the four thousand. If it's the crazy. earth's still here, like all that stuff is going to be like. Oh, I needed a new arm. I just well, I got a new one. Yeah. I like, agree. for real. Yeah. It's, like, a, it's coming. It's a petri yeah. dish. I just got a new right arm, so I just got to kind of get used to this hand. Exactly. Dr. Manoli, thank you so much for coming out, man. It was awesome. Dude, I had such fun. Uh, I hope I didn't put anyone to sleep out there. Absolutely. Oh, not, dude, it was man. great. <laughs> On the way out, anything you want to plug? 
advanced facial surgery. Proud to be an oral Mac surgeon. Um, I don't know, man. I just try to uh, take day by day and enjoy life. Thanks. And that's at Dr. Manoli on Twitter? It's at Dr. Manoli. Uh, that's Twitter. And then it's, um, what's it? Uh, Dr. Manolikakis on Instagram and advanced facial surgery on Facebook. Manoli is M-A-N-O-L-I-S. Yes. Nice. PBR Podcast. You can find us on the web. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let's give us some love. We'll love you back. You can find all Manoli's links off our wow. website, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. This yeah, we're going to. awesome. Thanks, Thanks man. Very cool, man. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right. <laughs>